Forgive me, Jesus. Or I can sing it like this. In the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus, give me I'm on my Bible study, so I'm totally in tune my Bible study, even though I messed up your worship time. Which is better, this one? Which do you think God likes better, the one?
worship the Lord. Oh, we are His people. We are the flock that He shepherd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jerusalem is from above. It is beautiful because Jerusalem is from above. That's why it's beautiful. Not that dusty old city out in the Middle East. Jerusalem is beautiful. We shall see her. We shall see her light one day. Amen. 
So when I say my spirit rejoices, because I know that that's, that, that's, a, that's a real place. Amen. He is worthy. Almighty, Alpha, Omega, the beginning and Jesus is. Huh? Oh, who was and is and is to come. Oh, who was and is and is to come. Who was and is and is to come. Who was and is and is to come. Love you, Lord. Everyone, I give, you, I give God glory. Tell somebody, somebody say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Yes, I do. It's good to be in God's house today. Good to be in God's house today. Good to come worship his name. Good to come worship him. We're a unified church, amen? We're, we're, we're a church. We're, we're a mixed church church and uh, we're, we're diverse cultures and colors and shades smashed together and put together by God and and so many of you from different backgrounds and and your various places in life that you come we, we have come together um, to form a church um, it wasn't our intention to make the church as it is but the church the way it is is uh, is wonderful and the way that it is is fine because it's it's what God wants us to to be. That's what we are today. And um, typically, when I when I when I come to a pulpit uh, on a Sunday, I'll have a shirt and a tie, or I'll have a I'll have a jacket, brother brother uh, my deacon. I'll have a brother George. I'll have a jacket, and you know. But today, I felt like being a bit flamboyant in my African style choir shirt. Our, no, 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 not choir shirt, our men's choir shirt. Men's choir shirt. She's like, oh, good, I have to wear it. <laughs> oh, just for the guys? Yeah. Oh, good, 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 good. That's. <laughs> you gave me a hat. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Oh, this, this, this Bible study is for you. You can make that kind of joke. <laughs> this, is, this is your Bible study. Oh, I'm going to hit you with it. <laughs> You're going to say, I shouldn't have said nothing. We got to Exodus chapter 12, and it's a, it's a commonly dealt with topic, but I had to deal with it again. And I had to deal with it because it was just so apparent that there is something different about this church, and there is something beautiful about this church. It is something that I would like to see continue. Um, it is something that I'd like to see progress. One of the things I said to the church a little while ago was that I was with Brother Alex and we went through a, a, a part of town called Helenbrook. And Brother George, Helenbrook is extremely diverse. Heaps of cultures over there. Just a massive melting pot. And I believe one of the reasons why God puts us in that place is because the gospel is for all nations and there are so many nations in that particular part of town um, and I like that I like there being a, being put into a place where there's heaps of different nations so they can see the glory of God the glory of God is not only revealed in the scriptures it's not only revealed in the heavens being declaring the glory of God, but the glory of God is also manifested in His church. And it is manifested in our diversity. And I'll tell you, I'll explain to you guys what I mean by diversity in a little while. The glory of God is revealed in our diversity. And you have to understand how God sees diversity. And understand the purpose of diversity because God wants a church that's a diverse church now I know the word diversity that's taken a real clobbering in the world I don't mean that type of diversity the diversity of the world is not the diversity of the church the divi the diversity of the world contradicts the, the nature of God it, con it contradicts the holiness of God the diversity of God 
is what he creates and for the purposes that he creates it for. I want the church to understand that you are not to look at verses 38 of the book of Exodus and just read over it when it says, verses 37 first, and the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Succoth, about 600,000 uh, 600, on foot that were men besides children, it's a lot of people. They include, they include the women, they include the kids, that's a lot of people. Um, and, and a mixed multitude went up. Usually there's about half men, half women, about 50, 51. 50% 50 men, 51% 50, women, I think it's about that. So you're looking at at least another 600,000 uh, of, of women. Um, a mix, and, and, it, and it's saying, and, and then there's the children. And, and typically each couple would have at least two children. So you're looking at another, you know, million people there. So if you, if you do the math, and if the, if the statistics are the same, good enough, then you're looking at at least 2.5 million people or so. Some say three, but I, I, let me just say, at a minimum, you're looking at about 2.5 million people. 2.5 million, ah, that's a church. That's a big church. The size, of Perth. size of Perth, wow. All together at one time, journeying together. All the people that in Perth moving together one direction. Wow, it's a lot of people. And the children of Israel, it says, first of all, that they journeyed. But then in verses 38, it said, it said not the children of Israel, it said a mixed multitude. Everybody say, God's people, God's people are, are what? A mixed multitude. You have to see that. And it is very rare for you to see the church. There are not many glimpses of the church in the Old Testament. A, a lot of people think, well, when I, when I look at the Jewish people, I look at the Jewish law, and I look at the Jewish system of worship, then that reflects the church. And, and to a degree, yes, it does. But I want to tell you something, that they are all Jewish. They were still all Jewish. The clearest picture of the church that you're going to get in the Old Testament actually occurs, in my, in my mind, it actually occurs in Exodus 12, 38. As, you, as we said, this is actually a story about the church's deliverance and God delivering his people by his might, by his power, with his right hand. He saves. And when God saves his people, You'll notice here that God did not have to say, and a mixed multitude. He didn't have to say that. He could have simply left out verses 38, kept verses 37, and he would have been fine. But there was something that God saw, and he glimpsed it, and it was beautiful. And when God saw it, and God glimpsed it, he saw the beauty of it, and he put it in the text. Because God has to share with you what he sees. There are, there are so many aspects of that story. There could have been another, there could have been something else at 39 and 40. It could have been all different from what he said here that we would have been able to appreciate. But he made us look at verses 38 and we need to understand verses 38 because this is a glimpse that God gets of the church. One of the earliest times that God glimpses the church. One of the very few times that God glimpses the church. God glimpses the church when he saw Eve coming out of Adam, prophetic. He knew that within her were all the nations and from her, from one man and one blood, he would bring all the nations of the earth. But it wasn't quite the same because there was only one person. But two point something million people saved by him coming up out of that place and being mixed together was an ideal that God had always sought. Israel didn't realize that that was the ideal that God had always sought. Israel always thought, he's our God, he's our God, and God said, no, well, you know, I actually made everybody. 
I made all the, I made all the, um, the, the colors and I made all the nations and from one blood I set them in the points of their habitation. I made them all. Israel said, God's our children. We are God's children. He's our father. And God says, no, I am the father of all living. I am the God of all flesh and of all blood. I am, I am, I am, I am God of, uh, of this nation. I am God of that nation. Whether they acknowledge me as their God or not, I still made them. No other God made them. The one who made you and formed you and fashioned you and created you is your God. Even though they deny me, I am still their God. So he has always known that he was a God, not of one nation. He has always known that he was a God of many nations. And in Abraham, he foresaw what he was going to do. And God said to Abraham, I, I shall make you the father of many nations. And God said to Abraham, in thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So it's always God's intention for there to be more than just the Jewish race and the Jewish people. But there's altogether something perverse and corrupt when a people think that they can take God, bottle him, put a tag on him and sell him in the local shop and say, well, you know, we have, we have the, the fountain of life, we have the fountain of youth, and it, you know, we've got it, we've got the well of salvation, and, on to, and God is only for us, and he'll always be only, we own him, we've cornered the market on God. And God said, yeah, look, listen, for my purposes I have given you me, I have given myself to you for a time, but it won't be forever. It's only for a little while. And I'm going to go back to being the God of all nations, because that is my glory and that is my praise. There is no way that one nation can give him all the praises. There is no way that one nation is sufficient to give him all the glory that he deserves. He, he, is, a, he is a God of the mixed multitude. And so when Israel began to come up out of that land and God glimpsed them, God said, write it, a mixed multitude came up. And let the church see that a, mi a, a mixed multitude went up with them. And when you get down to verses, let's go down to the end over here. I'm just going to read a little bit. Um, verses 48, listen to what God says here about the Passover. Verses 43 says, I just skipped over there. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, I know it's a mixed multitude. I know it's a mixed multitude. I know they haven't got all my precepts and all my laws. I know they're not following things the way that they should be. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. A mixed multitude came up, but what's a stranger? Ooh, who remembers the Bible study? Okay, but what, what, what's a stranger? Uh, she knows it. Say it again. Anything that is not of the fathers. Strange fire, strange nation, whatever, whatever, anything the Bible says strange, it means it did not come through the fathers. Old Bible study, sister, everyone remember that? What strange meant? A strange, what's a strange God? Is it a weird God like this? No, it's a God that did not come from the Father. So whatever, strange woman. A, a woman that was not Jewish. So whatever is strange, it did not come from the Jewish heritage. So when you see the word strange in the, in the scripture, it doesn't mean weird. It just means not of the fathers. So a stranger was a person who was among us, who dwelt among us, but they weren't born among us and, and, and we have had strangers and once just about everybody who was here at one point was a stranger uh, there, there was a time when when myself and Natasha and Tamra were baptized and hey, everybody else came along they were strangers Tash then they joined us no one came along they were a stranger they came along and they were they were, they were strangers I, I remember when um, when brother Hamlet was a stranger and uh, you know remember he talked about time one day he had a big fight big Big uh, punch up in church. Maybe he had a big punch up in church one day. He was about to. He went off his face, didn't he? He thought they're going to kick me out of church now. I was like, no, we're not going to kick you out of church. Why would we kick you out of church? <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a godly, holy place, and I'm going off my head. I'm cussing him. Yeah, it's okay. We're, 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 we're one strangers ourselves. 
<laughs> so that was nothing for us because we were strangers ourselves as well. No one shocks us. We're the church. Nothing makes us go, oh, we're the church. If anything shocks you, you must not, you must not have come as a stranger. You must, have been, you, must, you must have been cradled in the bosom of the church and you got exposed to nothing. But we are the church. So nothing should shock us. Look at what he says here. Go to verses 48. No stranger shall eat thereof. But he says, And when a stranger shall sojourn or dwell among you, and guys, as our church grows, we're going to have strangers coming among us. Different ways, different, everything, everything about them is different. They don't know the way the church is, how we operate, what's right, what's wrong. They're just, they're just here. We just, we, just have a, we just know we're supposed to be here, but we don't understand why we're here. When, when, when a stranger starts to journey with thee and, and, and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. Oh, he can keep it, yes. And then, and he shall be, everybody say, he shall be, he shall be. as one, that is? That is what? Born in the land. It's a mixed multitude. He's a stranger. He's a sojourner. He's not of the Israelites. He's not born of us. But guess what? When he comes, he says, let him be circumcised. And if anybody wants to join us, you've got to be circumcised. Get there. And when you have the circumcision, not made with hands, and the word of God begins to change your heart, then you shall be as one born in the land. Verses, verses, uh, for, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. So it's not that God was, ooh, you're a Gentile. No, no. It's God was that you're not converted. But when you've converted, you can eat. Then he says this. Let's read verses 49 together. One law shall be to him that is home-born and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. One law. So it's a mixed multitude, but it was never God's intention for it to remain a mixed multitude. You see, even though God says it's a mixed multitude, God said, yeah, hey, but I'm going to bring everybody into a, into a cohesive wholeness under my direction, the way I want it to be. But I want everybody to understand here, every single one of you, in your diversity, God has a reason for you to be where you are and you're doing a perfect job doing exactly what you're doing. And whatever changes there are to be in your life or anything else about you, it is for God to bring that about. With that long segue, I read my brother. Uh, uh, yeah, verse 38, I'm sorry. It says what? It says nightmare. Go ahead. The mixed multitude has to be one of the most complex situations that a pastor could face. Mm. Pastors work tirelessly to get everyone to be the same. I'm saying it again. Pastors want everyone to be the same. It is easy to govern and it's easy to lead when everyone's the same. When we all think the same, when we all act the same, it just makes my job so much easier if you did not see things differently, act differently for me. If we're all the same, it's just easier. There's less trouble. When you have diversity in a church and people think differently, act differently, sound differently, it's just, it's just different. It just makes it harder to bring everybody together. And when there's diversity in the church, oftentimes when there's diversity, there's often trouble. And I'll show you in scripture, diversity and trouble go together for various reasons. We speak about being community all the time. Mm. It is easier to be a group of people when they are all the same. Yes. We often use the scriptures to tell us that we are all to be the same. All Jews or all Gentiles, easy. Old Jamaican, oral African. Ah, all Jews, all Gentiles, easy. We can speak the same language. In the Romanian church, they're all Romanian. Guess what? We can speak Romanian. In the Korean church, we're all Korean. We can speak Korean. 
And it's our exclusive little niche group that we have within the context of, this, of the country. We, we, can, we can leave the, multi, the multiplicity and the diversity of the culture we're in and we can come into a church and we can find a, 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 a unity, cultural unity, which transcends into religious unity. It's very easy for cultural unity to become religious unity, very easy. So that's why I have my diverse shirts. See, if we're all the same, if, I, if, I, if, if, I, if, I, if I'm Jamaican and you're a Jamaican, and you come to church and you, when you clap, I go, I back your beat. So you go, book, then I go, back to that, back to that. And Brother George, it, it, it's, it, in, in my church where I'm from, that is so easy. And from Jamaica, it's so easy for us to all catch that same beat. It, it'll be easier, it'll be not so easy for Jordan to catch. He hasn't grown up with that cultural beat. But we all know it. And, 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 and when you, and when you yes, there's a, yes, we have the truth. Yes, we have the Godhead. Yes, we have, we have the Baptist. Yes, we have all those things. But man, when you come to a church and they sound like the church you left and the church you know, oh, you fit in real easy. When you, when you leave from, from uh, India and you go to a church where there are lots of Indians and they're all speaking the same um, Sanskrit. Is it Sanskrit? Uh, Sanskrit? No? Okay. In the same language as, as, as they do in India or in any other part of the world, Iran, Iran, whatever, you're like, I feel more at home. I just feel more at home because everyone looks like me. I'm different. Brother George, I don't feel at home when everyone looks like me. It feels weird. It feels strange. I'm uncomfortable with everyone looking like me. I'll show you why. Keep reading. All black or all white, mm -hmm. all Republicans or all Oh, yes, yeah, so we all look the same. We all have the same uh, uh, ideas in our heads about uh, politics. Oh, we all, we all think the same. That, that's easy. You know, and, and if, I, if I'm, I'm just, we don't have Republicans, Democrats here, but just because that's very known. If I'm a Republican, you're a Democrat, you don't think like me, well, you gotta go. You're evil, evil Democrats. Evil Democrat. You know, I treat like you're an evil Democrat, so you gotta go because the 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 the, the policy the, 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 that's just satanic. You can't believe that. So you go and join a church that's based on your political ideals. All of a sudden, you say, "Get rid of that dirty Democrat." We're we're okay now, right? We're better. We're we're better for it because we have cast out the evil Democrats, and all of us have Republican principles. We have, we, have, we have cast out the person who thinks differently from us and so we're better off because we cast out, because we end the diversity. Now we're back in unity of faith because we all think the same way. That's not how God's church works. Keep going. All the same color, mm -hmm. all the same culture, all the same past. Uh -huh. This is what we want because there is a very natural and cohesiveness yeah. and we all share the same characteristics. Yes. So you have a you have a country that's all black. You have a country that's all. I remember in 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 um in um in Canada when the Cambodians began to arrive. Oh, the boat people. Oh, brother George. All the immigrants <laughs> who were the first wave. Well, they forgot they're immigrants now, right? Because now. You know, you're naturalized, right? We have citizenship. But here they are, so many Cambodians. Well, that's what they said about you when you first arrived. Exactly. They're taking over this part of town. They're taking over that part of town. They're wrecking our cohesiveness. They're not speaking the same language as us. Hey, if you're in this country, speak the language. Because you were? Because you're Italian. Wow, you, you great sinner. That was his crime, he got beaten up for being Italian. So even as children, we are, we, we, we're, you know, you're a, and, and you're a great, great, uh, you know, person because you're defending your culture, defending your nationality, defend it to the death.
Everyone's. Mm-hmm. That's right. Biblical unity is not like that. Go ahead. Yeah. Hey guys, God likes it when we all have different points of views. I like it when we have different points of views. My points of views are different than your points of views. All God ever says is, don't let your point of view cause division in my church. He didn't say you have to get rid of your point of view because it's his job to change your point of view. But he says, don't let your point of view just interrupt with what I'm doing because what I'm doing is more important than what you're doing. But you're allowed to keep your point of view. Brother, Brother George, guess what? Uh, you, I, I'm not asking you, I, I have not had the, the mandate fulfilled upon myself. I came here and I preached about the mandate, right? Well, guess what? I haven't obeyed the mandate myself. You hypocrite. I, I, haven't, I haven't done it. I have my point of view. But guess what? I'm not telling my point of view. It's irrelevant. I already told you what God wants. Understand? You go. What did I say? Keep it to yourself. I have my point of view. You have your point of view. But we don't create disunity within the church. So we all are allowed to have, think whatever you want to think. Don't be contrary to the word. And don't cause this. Everybody say, don't be contrary to the word. And don't cause this unity in the church. Love Trump all you want. No one cares. Who cares? What do I care if you love Trump? Be Republican if you want. Just don't be contrary to the word and don't be disunified in the church because of it. Apart, keep your views. You can be a total communist if you want to be. I'm a bit communist myself. I like things being shared. I do. I like everyone owning everything and nobody having to claim to anything. It just belongs to everybody. I like that. I'm a bit of a quasi-communist myself. That's what communism is. Everything's just shared. Go ahead. That's my point of view. Oh, they will say, no, I don't like that. Well, that's your view. That's great. Let's just not have a debate about it in God's church, in God's house, in God's temple. There's a place for it. But keep your view. It's wonderful. I'm glad you have your view. It's great. No one cares. God does not mind when you do not agree with the pastor. He likes it when you have your own opinions about him. Yeah, hey, guess what? You don't have to agree with everything I say. I have a different point of view. But if my point of view is clearly written in the Word of God, you can't disagree. It's no longer me, it's the Word of God. I have a view about something, you can see some of the way. You're okay to do that. But when I tell you, turn here, it says that there, then you've lost the point. Because now it's about the Word, not about me. But you can have a different point of view. And we can have debates about it. I got Brother George, I have a different point. I am right to you, we can call back and forth, we can talk about it all we want. But, there, but when I see you, you're my brother, and there's no disconnect between us. So you can have diversity of views, but no disconnect. It's called maturity. Go ahead. You are allowed to have your own opinions. Yep. You yes, you are. Church. Yes, you are. Why? It is because we are a mixed multitude. Yep. This church is a mixed multitude in many ways. Yep. The strength of the church comes uh, from God, as we know, but it also comes from our diversity. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Isn't that strange? The strength of a church comes from God. Yes. But did you know that the strength of a church also comes from its diversity? And a, and a church is only as strong as it is diversified? You would not believe how weak a church can be when the church is not diversified. I've seen it myself. It's scary. People who think they're on their way to heaven are actually on their way to hell because their church lacks diversity. And when God introduces diversity within the church, the people can't handle it. Go ahead. What do I mean by that? Tell them. Well, I am black and my wife is white. Tell me I'm black. You're white. Let's face that reality. I told my wife when we first got married, Tammy, you need to get a tan. Seriously, girl. Come on, girl. Get a tan. 
I told her the first time, come on, honey, you can get a 10. You know, get it? Just get a 10, a little 10. Well, the joy she ignored me the first time. And I told her, you know, a little sunshine out there, honey, you can get in the sun. You know, slip, slop, slap, you know, like, you know, it's, <laughs> get a 10. Benny has a 10. I mean, if Benny can 10, so can you, Tamara. <laughs> Benny has a great 10 in the summertime, you know? One day my wife looks at me and she goes, Robert, you married a white woman. <laughs> I <stopped>. Understood. <laughs> Just, <laughs> yeah, uh, let's move on from there. I, mean, I never bothered her. Tell me, did I ever bother you to be tanned? For everything? I never, no. Never, never did Sister Armaine. She was, if she, uh, you understand, Robert? Yeah, okay, finally I got it. All right, you're not going to change who I am. I'm going to be what I am. Move on. <laughs> Grow up. Okay, yeah, go ahead. I can guarantee you that if God picked us up and planted us in some beautiful, pristine, white church... Now, I can tell you, because it really happened, right? If God said to you, Robert, I want you to go and move to some church somewhere that's a, a white church. Brother George? Oh, I go to the white church. I'm black. My wife is... Now, remember, they're all dancing around speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Oh, they're all speaking in tongues. Brother, George, Brother Regan, they're all speaking in tongues. And the moment they could be in the middle of their anointing, the moment I show my face is one thing, then my wife's face is something. Then together, oh, no. But... <laughs> <laughs> Woo! The Holy Ghost is like. <laughs> but I thought you were so strong. I thought you were so full of God. I thought you were speaking tongues. And I, yes, I know because everything was exactly the way I like it to be. And there was no challenge by color or culture or anything. As long as it's the way I think it should be, it's God. But if it's different, it's not. And I am not talking about sinful diversity. I am talking about spiritual diversity. The way God wants it to be. The way he made us to be. Get over it. You married a white lady. Get over it. You're black. Get over it. You're Korean. Get over it. It's the way God wants us to be. You did not make me. The Ethiopian cannot change his skin. So why is it stopping your dancing? What happens? What happens to your rejoicing? Why aren't you rejoicing? I tell you what, I'm a, Brother George, we got our, we got, after church on Sunday, myself and my wife and, and uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Luffman and his wife and his kids. I, I got a, they, they sent me a picture of their little baby riding a lamb. You, yeah, I, want, I want you to send them to the church, uh, but I, I'll get their permission first, right? And we, we came over there, we hung out, and I was so happy. You know, what a beautiful Aboriginal family. Hey, man, I'm not, uh, I'm dancing. You, you see what the church is supposed to be? I, I, I wanted some Aboriginal families to come to the church and our church should not look like the world where everything's all divided and mindsets about this, but nonsense should not be in God's church. I rebuke it all. I was rejoicing, Brother George. Brother Dion, ah, uh, listen, Brother Dion. In some churches, people like, we're not, we're not racist. We're not, well, <laughs> We have Aboriginals in our church. You mean Aboriginal? Singular? We're not all racist. We have white people. You mean white person? You have one. You have one. And it's your token one that gives you the right to say we're not because we have this one person. Don't bring your friends. Just stay. Don't bring your friends. Just you alone, okay? So now we're like, I know, yes, I know a black, I have a black friend. It's Fatmata. How many friends do you have? A thousand? 
How many black? One. <laughs> I, am, I am challenging. I want to be challenging. I want, I, want, I want to get every nonsense that's in your head because these things send you to hell. <laughs> you better believe why we're all like the way we are. And, 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 and if you know it, well, thank God, move on. But if, 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 if inside of you, there is some little thing inside of you that is unequal in some way, you need to be careful because he knows your heart. He searches it. He knows it. He sees it. He hates it. It'll kill you. Well, George, I can give you a poison that's very small, only a little bit of it, and that poison will kill you. Guarantee. It'll make you very sick. Go ahead, brother. Most pastors try to teach the dilemma of the mixed multitude by getting everyone in the church to be exactly alike. I went to an all-white church in Georgia, and they asked me to leave by telling me that there was a black church nearby that what? would be more comfortable with. What did you say? What did you say? I went to an all-white church in Georgia, and they asked me to leave by telling me that there was a black church nearby that I would be more comfortable with. When I went there, I heard a song. I, I man, Brother Regan. This church was pumping. They were pumping. They sang a song. Mm, 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 mm. Give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah. Dun, 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 dun. When I think of Jesus and all he's done for me. That's like running man. I'm not doing, I'm not really running man, okay? I'm not very good. <laughs> My son told me, Daddy, don't, 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 don't do that. When I think of Jesus and how he set me free, I want to dance, 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 dance. And the drummer goes, all night. Oh, man, they were jamming. I'm like, what? What? This is a white church. It's something like this. I'm like, oh, all night. I'm thinking, I'm like, yeah, they are. Whoa. I'm like, this church is hopping. I, I mean, I thought, yeah, I could feel everything. Like, man, they were jamming. Oh, they were giving all the highest. I looked around with a thousand people. I looked around, looked around, I said, like, hey, hang on, wait a minute. Hey, there are black people here. Don't judge. It is Georgia. It's like 80% black or something in Georgia. It's a white church in black Georgia. Oh, and they were just rejoicing. Anyway, the preacher preached. And I went down to the front of the church. I, I was at the front there and I was, I was praying. I was in God's house, thought so, praying to my God. I thought the same God. And this guy came over, hallelujah, 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 brother. <laughs> brother. <laughs> I, you're still my brother, but uh, I didn't say you weren't my brother. You're just not here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, um, you're a bit too close. Um, look, we have the one black guy in the choir up there. And he's kind of light-skinned as well, you know. <laughs> he's more like Regan kind of thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, he said to me, there's, a, there's a, a black church down the road that you'd be a lot more comfortable in. <laughs> yeah. I, I, was, I was like, oh. You are kidding me. He's going to hell. Where do you think he's going? He's going to hell. Dance to hell. Dance to hell. I think he's more happy to hallelujah. Our church is all African. It's all African. It's all African. Our church is all black. Our church is all white. Our church is all Korean. Our church is all Filipino. Our church is all... You're happy because you have one culture within your church? And you're rejoicing? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't rejoice in a church where there's only one culture. I would stop and think and reflect and say, what's wrong here? And what would happen if a black person or a white person or a non-Filipino person or a non-Asian person or a non-whatever person comes into our midst? Wow. All of a sudden, the veil, the veil of our spirituality, our dancing, our rejoicing, the veil of our, of our 
of our, our hate, our lack of God within us, the veil drops off. When God puts something different that you're not used to in your midst, all of a sudden it exposes you. You're naked before him with whom you have to deal. So God said, my church is a mixed church. I was not Yep. 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 I had to act quickly. I was Whoa! Let me cry it out. Whoa to the man who did that! He don't even know. I've been preaching about him for years now, and I want to thank. <laughs> But too, I want to thank God for sending that man to me that night. Thank God for sending him. Thank God for, for, for tearing the veil off their rejoicing and let me see the corruption that was really inside of them. Thank you, Lord, for ripping that religious veil away for a second and let me see what their heart was truly like. For had they had the Spirit of God within them, such Disunity would not be there. And, and, and trying to orchestrate the way God's church should look and say to God's church, hey, hey, you should look like this. But well, we're not happy. Keep going. His soul is in great danger. Deep. He is most likely on his way to hell in his perfect white church. Yep. If I were a white guy in that church, I would ask the pastor, I would. If, I, if I'm the church of a thousand people that was all white, I'd say, oh, <coughs> Pastor, yeah, where are the black people at? Oh, please sit down, Brother Robert. That's inappropriate. We have tried to bring black people to this church, but they just keep leaving. <laughs> That's because Deacon, <laughs> whoever keeps telling them to go. <laughs> I promise you, Brother Regan, Go ahead. I, I kept on saying for a while now that we needed more Aboriginal people in this church. Uh huh. And God is sending yes, he is. Most pastors are not like me. Mm -hmm. They do not understand the Holy Ghost needs the diversity in the church to perfect the church. Huh? The Holy Ghost needs the diversity in the church to perfect the church. The Holy Ghost needs the diversity in the church to perfect the church. Love your neighbor as yourself. What is the greatest of all the commandments? Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, your own soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Who is my neighbor, Lord? A certain man went down and he saw Samaritan. All your religious people. Samar the moment he said Samaritan, you go, not, not the Samaritan. Oh, we don't like the Samaritans. But we're good religious people, though. We go to church, we give our tithes, we do. But the Samaritans, we can't handle them. You see, even in their days, they had people in the Jewish religion, they liked it all to be just Jewish. And the Samaritans were just yuck. Keep going, brother. When everyone looks like you, acts like you, and thinks like you, <laughs> you are most likely unchallenged and unchanged. Yes. If we're all South African, you're unchallenged and you're unchanged and all i have to do to tear down the veil of your seeming spirituality is to show myself to you and you go oh. especially because i sound like a white guy sorry i do i sound like a white guy when I talk on the phone with you, I'm like, G'day, um, hello, this is Robert here from blah, 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 I sound like a white guy. If I sound like a black guy, I would go like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> yeah, this is Rob from, you know, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? I would have a, uh, I'm sorry, but I will have a slang or an accent or something that gives my way. But no, I have a, I'm from Canada, so we can't, I sound Canadian, you know? So if I sound like that, they say, yeah, oh, brother, would you like to come to church today? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Would you like to pick me up at 7 o'clock? <laughs> you would never guess that I was a black guy. But I am freely 
that's a lot of black guy here. That's six foot five, 285 pounds and climbing. <laughs> Nuku, when you made this shirt for me, it was big. I fit it now. <laughs> Brother Regan, it's like, it might be getting a bit tight. You know? <laughs> I am all, so my voice doesn't match what I look like when you talk to me. One of my customers said to me, you've got a really good telephone voice. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> I, I know what you mean by that, but thank you very much. Yes, I like to fool people with it. Go ahead. <laughs> when the end comes, God is going to ask the pastors of the churches why their church was all black or all white. He's going he's gonna to say that. Hey, Pastor Robert, yeah. Why was your church all black? Hey, Pastor Frank, why was your church all white? Why was your church all Romanian? Why was your church all Serbian? Why was your church all, you know, Vietnamese? Why was your church all Chinese? Why was your church, why was your church all one nation? Every pastor must answer to God, why? And it better be, well, I live in China. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Or if you're Jamaican, I live in Jamaica, so okay, that's fine. But when you are in a diverse country and everyone in your, in your church is only that color, you must give an account to God. The God who says that my house shall be a house of prayer of diverse city. Go ahead. You must. Yeah. I would really like everyone to remember these two words, unchallenged and unchanged. Can we say it together? Unchallenged and unchanged. That shall be the judgment for many in the end. In the end of time, God shall stand before many and he shall say unchallenged, unchanged. Unchallenged, unchanged. Because you, you, you niched out and created for yourself a church that was much to your liking. And you found yourself a church. Uh, you know, hey guys. We do not marry and divorce in this church. Amen. We don't condemn anybody who is. We, we tell them what the Bible says. And we, 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 and we leave them at that. We don't have an accusationary faith that we bring towards them. You understand that? Sorry, it says it. I have to preach it. It's there. If, if you fit it, God wants you to make the changes that you need to make. I am not trying to hurt you. I'm trying to help you. Our church is like that. We don't condemn anybody. We try to help you. But in some churches, if you don't like what the preacher says, what do you do? You go and find yourself a church where the pastor has divorced Tammy. And he has married someone else. And the deacon has divorced. And the secretary is divorced. And the, the drummer is... The, it, you understand that? You find a church where everyone's like you. And God goes, oh. Hello, uh, brother unchallenged. Hello, sister unchallenged. Or should that be brother or sister unchanged? Unchallenged? Unchanged lost guaranteed if you're unchallenged you shall be unchanged and you will be lost guaranteed the church is the most challenging place and call for you to make decisions that you would never normally make I can't stand you I hate you yeah. sorry you're my enemy you're the worst person in the world Let's just say I had that attitude towards her because she was like, yeah. Whew. What did the Bible tell you? Love, Love who? Your enemy. En what did the Bible say? So what? You have an enemy. So you've got an enemy in the church. So what? So you have an enemy in the church. So what? How do you fulfill that scripture? Unless I give you an enemy. 
So why are you complaining that you have an enemy? I gave you the enemy so you can overcome the enemy so you can be saved. Amen. Unchallenged? Unchanged. Did I just scream? Sorry. <laughs> In a lot of churches, they like it very quiet. I can't come to Zion because, I mean, it's a great, don't get me wrong, Rob's a great preacher and everything, but man, does he scream a lot. And when they worship, it's so noisy there. It's so noisy. I need a church that's really quiet. We can, you know, <laughs> and God's like, hmm. See, so I'm looking for a church that has the truth. You want a church that's more quiet. So my message this weekend on Sunday is called Heaven is Noisy. It's noisy. And I heard the sound as it was of many thunders thundering. And I heard the voice uh, and it was like a great cry. And I heard it was all, it, everything is noisy, you know? Oh, sorry, this one time and there was silence for half an hour and then I got to read it out again. So just to make you know, yeah, yeah. Silence was just for half an hour after that was noisy again. Everyone's screaming, shouting, praising. The multitude is crying out with a great, can you imagine? Billions and billions of people around the throne of God. How do you expect billions and billions of people around the throne to be going, holy, holy, holy Lord. How? Eh? With Victor, if God breaks out some bongos, you jump on him there, okay? And you beat those bongos as loud as you can, brother. Heaven is very noisy. And that's the message this weekend. For everybody who says the church is too loud, let me tell you something. What are you doing, Pastor Robert? I'm getting you ready for heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah! Yeah. Can I hear a little louder? Hallelujah! That's too noisy. That's, that's too noisy. Now, in, in our church, back in our culture, we don't make that much noise. So, God's not deaf, you know. <laughs> God can hear you when you just pray in your heart. Man, shocking ever. I went to a church one time, right? When I got to the church, the pastor said, okay, saints, let us... Um, church, let us, let us all pray right now. Let us all pray. Just close your eyes and, and just pray. Why are you praying like that? Because God knows the heart. You haven't got to scream it out. <laughs> Sorry, but the Holy Ghost is noisy. Sorry, it's just, the, the Holy Ghost is noisy. Can I just say hallelujah three times? Hallelujah! Ha come all together. Hallelujah! 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 You see? You can't be distracted by anything else. Because you're too focused on the praises going up. Nothing else can. <laughs> My brother? <laughs> eh? <laughs> the baby's crying? <laughs> they're, all on a, they're all on a trigger, you know? It's like everyone's like, boom! Everybody, everybody's head. <laughs> But I tell you what, if the pastor was like, ah, oh, that way, it was going nuts, and you, the baby could cry all he wants. You know, we really don't care. <sighs> and they're, 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 the kids are quiet, man. They don't make any trouble. Give me five minutes, I'll be done. Brother, go ahead.
Oh yes, I had to write this. Michael, forget. I said, you know what? I'm going to test our friendship. I'm going to test our. I need this. And I actually wrote it. I actually wrote it. Can I read it? It's not fair for you to read. It. I have to read it. The, the, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. We have. God made men and women to make sure that we are challenged and changed by them. They are so different. Say amen. Any other brother like to say amen on that one? Amen. 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 And if you're not married, you, you, your amen's coming. Your amen's coming. That man could speak the truth. He knew it. He knew. <laughs> Lord, Lord, Lord. I'm going to read it right now. Michael has a man bun. There, I said it. Michael? It's not like a man. It's not like a goatee. It's not like a, like a little, what do you call that? Thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. Valerie, I'm, I'm sorry to mess with your fiance, I know. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I just, so, I, I said, Michael has a man bun there, I said it. You know why? Because I look in the church for diversity, something different. Something different. You know, I need just like, boom, the man bun. I got like, <laughs> there I am. I'm, I have to challenge, I'm challenged, I am challenged tonight. Because I had to, I'm challenging our friendship, you know. In this heart, there is no corruption. There's no impurity. There's nothing evil. If anything, I, 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 I just need it for an example. There's, I'm not making fun of him. It's just, I need the example. And since he started wearing it about a month ago, well, I just figured, you know, let's go ahead. Go ahead. I, I said it, yeah. You go to any holiness church in the world and tell me where you're going to find an apostolic brother with a man bar. Nowhere. Wait, I'm telling you, nowhere. There are no apostolic brothers with man buns. You know why? Because every pastor would come and criticize his man bun straight away. If that's what pastors do. They're all in your face all the time. Everything they do. They can never just back off and say, listen, this is the church and my job is to preach the word of God. And not to look in the crowd and see I can pick on. <clears throat> Today we should speak about hairstyles. A man's hair is supposed I mean, who do you think I'm preaching to? The cow the man bun, of course. Why do that? Okay, go ahead. Most, most apostolic pastors would bring their scissors to church for such emergencies. <laughs> for such what? Emergencies. emergencies. Brother Michael, lest the other males in the church begin to wear man buns as well. So next week, um, I, I, Brother Jordan, Brother, Brother Soren, your, uh, your handsome son's name? Jeremy. 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 So next week, Jeremy has a man bun. You're blaming him, you know? <laughs> and you're blaming me as well, because I should have I said something about the man bun, you know? Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. But our church is a mixed multitude. We're a mixed multitude. Go ahead. And there will be people with all different hairstyles in it. Yes, there was. Most black pastors don't have this issue because they have no white people in their church. Say it again. Most black pastors don't have this issue because they have no white people in their church. Brother Troy? See, most black pastors don't have brothers with big beards in their church because, you know, we, in our culture we just shave our beards when we go to church. We just, we just do. We don't, we don't ever grow a beard, you know? But guess what? You're in Australia! In Australia, men grow beards. <laughs> Get used to it. <laughs> What's my brother Regan showed up with a beard? I don't know how he does that. But one week he has no beard, the week after he has a beard. <laughs> he has the fastest growing beard. Am I right or wrong? It's like, boosh, you know? it's like, Brother Regan, I didn't even recognize you for, you know. Go ahead. They have simply never had to deal with a man problem. Now, does the Bible have an opinion on the length of a man's hair? Does the Bible say something about a man's hair? Yes, it does. Of course it does. You have your Bible. Of course it does. Keep going. Do, do I need to come up to the pulpit to preach about it? Do I have to come to the pulpit and preach about it? No, I don't. When you're trivial and you have nothing meaningful to say to the church, then your main purpose is 
to look and make sure that everybody looks the same, acts the same, dresses the same, whatever. It's, you know, or, or, and then you got to pick and pick and pick. And your ministry becomes a ministry of picking on everything. You're not a Holy Ghost pastor. Preach the word. Let everything else in its time fall into place. It's a mixed multitude. You understand that? I know one to judge everything and anything. Focus on the depth of the word and you don't have time for every other small thing that happens in the church. Because one day that same small thing will come to you and say, oh my God. And turn the children off of God because we're just, we're just all about, you know, uh, weighing, the, weighing the mint to the, to the, to the, the cumin or whatever, you know. Go ahead. Some things are not from the, for the pulpit. The pulpit is a place of depth. Keep going. Yep. They interpret the relevance and the spirit works in the church too effectively for me to waste time on such I said the Holy Ghost works too effectively in the church. It's God that makes the church and prepares the church and makes it what it needs to be. It's, it's not me and all my preaching, my picking on anybody. It's God's church. He'll work his church in the way he wants it to be. Okay, almost there. Yeah, go ahead. As, as Paul said, meat commands us not to go. Yep. I always prefer to preach the deeper things and leave the shallow things for simpler minds to contemplate. Mm, I said all these things are awesome and beautiful and wonderful. And so I'm saying, oh wow, this person was wearing this particular thing. I didn't know it was, you know, like, come on, leave the rest for God. Go after the deeper things. Some say, it's the little foxes that, 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 that spoil the, that, that spoil the eh? It's the little fox. Yeah, I know. And, and we're supposed to spend our whole ministry picking on the little foxes. No, we don't. In, in, if your church has got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is able to take care of all those things. Focus on the deep things of God where people grow. You don't grow from hairstyles and this. You don't grow from that. It's God has more to reveal than that. Go ahead. In Acts 6, 1 through 2, yep. we are told of an issue that arose based on the principle of the mixed multitude. Yep. It seemed as if the brethren who were Greek mm -hmm. they were being ignored by the Jewish brethren yep. based on their ethnicity. Yep. Perfect. God hey, hey, so the, the Greeks began to complain against the Hebrews because in, in, the, in the daily menstruation, the Hebrews were getting more and the, and, the, and, the, and the Greeks were getting left out. Read it when you have a chance. Acts, Acts 6, 1 to 2. You read about it before. And then you know what I say? I say, perfect. That's beautiful. And God's like, yes, perfect. Go ahead. Oh, by the way, this is a mixed multitude. We have the all the elderly people and we have all the children they're so loud and annoying aren't they not to me they're not but to somebody else they're very annoying i can't go to that church why the children are so noisy and unless we make a perfect environment where we can't mix the adults and the children uh -uh, it doesn't work Unless they make an environment that's perfectly quiet for all the hours to perfectly focus on. We can't have church. Eh? That's why uh, you, you brought a young lady to church on, and, and she cries out sometimes. I said, don't worry. It's, it's, in the church, you shouldn't have to stress about stuff like that. She comes to church, she comes to church. She makes a noise, move on. Sorry. Sorry, guys. That's, that's, that's who we are. But it's not all going to be perfect and everyone's quiet. Some of may have something and that's what and they and their utterance comes out like that and they that's God made him and put him in that body cope sorry it's not gonna be quiet for you cope grow up or you or you'll find that in yourself there's an intolerance it's like <sighs> sorry it's okay I'll be done in five minutes God likes this kind of problem yep Church is growing in diversity. Yep. And there are two types of diversity. Yep. There is sinful diversity and there is godly diversity. Just keep going, yep. So being obnoxious and hateful and bitter is not the kind of diversity I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> God rejects all sinful diversity and he embraces godly diversity. Yeah. Godly diversity begins with the word of God. Yep. Godly diversity is the 
12 video and it ends in Revelation 7, 9 through 17 when the scripture says, After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude. I saw a mixed multitude. A great multitude, a mixed multitude of every nation and kindred and tongue. Hey, they're all there. Hey, guess what? That's what God was seeing. The mixed multitude at his throne, which has never been. Go ahead. But then again, I shouldn't say that because Revelation, it says you've redeemed us out of every kindred and tongue. It does say that, so. Which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and peoples and times stood before the throne and before the Lamb. Yep. While we're in this chapter, it is useful to look at Revelation 7, 9 through 8. Very important. Revelation 7, 1 through 8, says that 144,000 are chosen. Natasha, guess what? God gets rid of diversity. At, when the church has reached perfection, and God takes the mixed multitude, God goes back to his old ways, if you want to call it that. One group. Tash, if you're a woman and you want to be among 144,000, sorry, the mixed multitude era is over. You can always tell when God stops saving, the mixed multitude disappears. And only one specific group that he has ordained begin to come to the fore, the 144,000. Just look at it for yourself. He, he, I don't see him saving anybody else. He saved 144,000. Everybody else is dying. Because, eh? And they're all, oh, and by the way, yes, and they're all unmarried. Not just all, they all, they're, they're, they haven't ever touched a woman. Because he, he's getting rid of everything. He just wants it to be specific and that's when you know he's ended this whole mix so hey guys right now we better just use what we have right now because one day God's gonna get rid of all of it unless you're a Jewish man from one of the 12 tribes you ain't gonna make it <laughs> there's a mixed multitude there <laughs> let's just go on, go on to the last paragraph now you guys can read the rest of it oh can I here's a good question what reflects the church more the 144,000 or the mixed multitude? Obviously. That's what I'm saying, you have to see from God's eyes. So when God saw, when God saw the, the, the mixed multitude, he said, I see the church. The 144,000, I don't see the church. The mixed multitude, I see the church. You see his perspective? Totally different. Read the last paragraph now. When anyone new comes among us, they do not know who we are. We only perceive something good in us, so they remain among us. Everyone who joins us and plays a role in forming the mixed multitude is uncircumcised. They do not understand the God we serve. We embrace them. They do not truly know who Jesus is. We embrace them. They do not know what holiness is. We embrace them. Yes. We were all as they are when we first came to the church. All like that when you first came. Yep. We the church uncircumcised. Yep. But please observe for a moment what the will of God is for those uncircumcised souls who join God's people. In Exodus 12, we see the God of Israel saying they have come as uncircumcised, but along the journey, they find themselves being circumcised. Amen. The same thing happens to all of us in the church, as we told in Colossians 2.11, which says, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, That's right. in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Amen? Amen. Now, so everyone who laughed at my shirt, Everyone's going to get one. I got you one, brother. And everyone who thought that someone said to me, oh, you need the red nose to go along with that, Rob. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, that's really good because I'm going to preach about you today. <laughs> All the guys in the church, you're going to get one of these. Brother Dion, at some point we say, everybody give Sister Nuku and uh, Fatmata. I hope you guys can still sew. Don't lose. Make sure you keep them that material. I'm going to throw mine away. It's been in my cupboard. It's our car uniform. And this, will, this, will, this, will, this won't be our only one. But this will be one of them. It's our diversity. Hey? Blessing, glory, and honor. Power, might, and dominion. Be unto thee, my blessed Lord. Somebody say, blessing, glory, and honor. Come on, power, might, and dominion. Oh, be unto thee, my blessed Lord. 
Somebody say, coming down from his throne on high, he died on the cross for me. Rising from the dead, he lived to give me the victory. Somebody say, blessing, glory, and honor, oh, power, might, and dominion. Be unto thee, my blessed Lord. So here we are, God, we stand before you. We are the mixed multitude. You've smashed all these cultures together. We're coming from Africa, we're coming from the West Indies, we're coming from different parts of Asia, we're coming from Australia, we're coming from the North, the East. You say you bring your people from all the points of the world. You're going to bring them together as one. You're going to bring them together. This is what the church is supposed to be like. This might be a strange message. Most pastors don't preach this kind of message, but I'm going to preach it. Because your church is supposed to look a certain way. It's supposed to look like the multitude that came out of Egypt. Because, Lord, everybody at church on a Sunday in some churches, Lord, everybody got to be dressed in white. Oh, they're all dressed in white. But the, I'm sure when the slaves came out of there, Lord, they were not dressed in whites. They were in their mangled, raggled clothes. Whatever they came out of there with, it went on, on, on their back, whatever they left with, they were slaves. Whatever they left with, whatever they kept, and they could carry along, God. That's how they came out. Here we are, God. We're coming towards you. We, we, we're coming with, with some of our, our slave clothes on. Lazarus came out of the grave with his grave clothes on. Whether it's slave clothes or grave clothes, one day there's going to be a change. It doesn't matter. When I, when I come to church and I've got my white robe on, and I've got my white shirt and the white skirt and the white hat and the white everything, dressed, all, the, all the saints dressed in white, it don't look like that in heaven still. The beauty of heaven and the beauty of the church is that we're all so different from each other. But yet we've found a way to love each other. we found a way to make everything right between each other, God. That's where your glory lies. Not in all of being the same. So Lord, let those who have one view, let them keep their view. And you work on them in their view. And you work on me on my view. But we're not going to fight about our views because it's the church. And you're, and you're to be glorified in it. Not, the, not divided in inside of it. We are a mixed multitude and you accept that fact. I accept that fact. The church accepts that fact. Now teach us to love each other and to live within the diversity that you have created. We all think differently. We all feel differently. We're all coming from different perspectives. But God, in everything, you must be given the glory. For the church must remain the church. And you will make the church what it needs to be, regardless of how different we are. But for all things, I give you thanks today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.